Well, now that we've got some baling done and waiting for some more hay to dry, better get this rig out here so we can pick up bales. Well, good morning, everyone. It's a hot and humid Saturday morning. I think it's still probably about 95% humidity and Where's old sun there? There it is up there. Looks like we got some smoke in the air. I don't know where it's from. Must have some fire somewhere. It's, like I said, humid as hell and grass is still sopping wet, so I can't really do much spraying. So I thought, well, I had to fix some teeth on the rake and I figured I may as well pull this rig out. Highline 1400 bale picker. And I got a, Orbit motor that was leaking pretty bad last fall. This one right here. Figured may as well get it out and before it gets too crazy hot before lunch, get that off so I can get a new one. So, what this is, like I said, it was a Highline 1400 round bale picker. I don't know if, for those of you that don't know what a bale picker is, it's you can see the arms here, it pulls it down with the hydraulics, picks up the bale, throws it onto the bed. And then you have pipe style, two pipe style bales, rows of bales, pardon me. And it uh, hauls 14 bales at a time. And a handy rig, for especially a one man operation, so you don't have to be running around with a loader and hooking and unhooking and it's been working pretty good for us over the years, so once we get her fixed up and on the move, we'll show you how it's done. Well, to get this motor off, you gotta loosen your chain. And that's done by loosening this off. This whole apparatus assembly slides back, allows me to take the chain off. And then you got to take this sprocket off to be able to take these four bolts out and take the motor out. And it's rusted on there good because it's never been taken off since, well, I think this is a 1998 model. So you do the math how old that thing has been on there. So yeah, I remember... We replaced one on this side here a couple of years ago. And it was a miserable thing to get off too. And I think what we ended up having to do is, uh, what did we, I think maybe we even had to heat it to get it off. So I'll leave the pressure on. It's almost dinner time and I got to go to a funeral after lunch. So. The rest of my day is kind of pooched anyways, so we'll just leave the, that sitting on like that and maybe over time it might loosen up, I doubt it. But uh, we'll come back at it another time, another day. Well, lo and behold, I guess when you clean off the old oil and crap around there, you'd find that there's an actual set screw in there that should be taken out first before you start reefing on the pulley. Duh. Well, it's the next morning. I realized, I think I, when I left off with you yesterday, I realized there was a set screw in there. Lo and behold, there was two. So yeah, working against myself. So I got them out and I've tried with the gear puller here again, but this seems to be it to no avail. It's probably rusted on pretty good. So I tried tapping on it and no, it doesn't seem to be working. So give her a little warm up with the torches and see if maybe some heat will get it off. <laughs> I guess I should have videoed this because I just nicely got the torches going about 10 seconds and all of a sudden, pop, goes the weasel. 
Now I can get that off with no problem. Well, we finally got it off. After that first pop, I thought she would just come off with the gear puller no problem, but no, I had to three or four times, maybe five times, tighten up the puller, take the torch to it, a few seconds, pop, just keep going like that till it finally come apart. Even had to reconfigure my gear puller here because it was giving me some grief. So we got her off. So now we'll, all we gotta do now is take off the four bolts, the two hoses, and we'll go get a new rotor. Talk to you when we get the new part. Well, it's a couple of mornings later. I got the motor on, went to Pearson to Lee Service Center. That's our local Highline and Vermeer dealer that I've been dealing with for quite a few years. I'd like to give them a little shout out. They've got, they're down in Pearson, Manitoba, which is right in the southwest corner of the province, not too far from the U.S. border for our U.S. friends. Uh, they sell Vermeer, Highline, Farm King, and some other short line stuff. So those that's the dealership we like dealing with. The Baylor, that's where we bought it from. It's worked out pretty good for us. Get good service and everything else. They know what they're doing. And and uh, this picker, well, we've had it for quite a few years, but we get our parts from there. So, so yeah. Shout out to them. So yeah, we got the motor on, chain on, ready to go, ready to wreck again. Now all I gotta do, I got this tractor, this 4450 unhooked from the sprayer. Had to wait for an east wind yesterday to spray some spurge, leafy spurge patches on a field close to some canola so I had to wait for an east wind to, to keep that away from that because canola don't like the chemical we're using. So now we can free up this tractor but what we got to do is we shore up the hitch. I'll show you here in a few minutes once I get it on but the first thing I got to do is turn the hitch around Take that double clevis off, of course, because you got a double clevis there. Take the double clevis off, put our bracing in there for, and our chain to run to the three point up there at that pin. And then turn the hitch around because I don't know why with this tractor, the arms, when you go down, it seems to kind of be a little too much like this. So you turn the hitch around, have your hitch a little bit higher here. Because we have 18438 tires and they're radials, so they squat down and the hitch is a little lower to the ground than the other tractors. Because those ones are 20.838 bias tires, so they stay up pretty good. So we have to turn the hitch around and do a little funky stuff there. I got my monitor, the monitors or the uh, control box is in the cab as you can kind of see in there right there so this is generally our bale picking tractor and also our raking tractor so eventually I'll have to take the duels off here to do to go raking because we can't can't go in between the swaths without trapping them with the duels on so I thought maybe we could do it with the duels nope can't do it so anyways we'll get this flipped around and uh, probably later in the day because I got to do some bailing after lunch and I got a calf we had to do away with He's in that pen over there we went to move the group of cows that were north out there of on dad's we took them out west to what we call 28 and dad had them on the road allowance just over there overnight i don't know what the heck happened but uh there was a calf when we were bringing them up yesterday morning to to move them 
calf with a broken back leg. And it was all swelled up. And uh, I took a picture, sent it to my vet. She's like, I can't do anything with this calf. It's too swollen. There's no way we can get a cast on it. It's not look. It's not a good situation. So what we did, got the neighbor to come out this morning, and we had to put him down. Just the most humane thing to do. And uh, you don't like doing those things, but it happens. So I gotta go bury her right after lunch, and then got a little bit of bailing to do, and then we'll work on this. Talk to you later. Well, it's a few days later. Had issues with a couple of bulls going down with injuries. We got one, we, another bull, a third bull that we had to bring home from the pasture for foot rot. We had to treat a couple other cows for foot rot in another pasture. Yeah, it's just been one hiccup after another. And my feedlot cleaner is supposed to be coming. Well, he was supposed to wanted to come last week, and uh, I thought I better get the shed cleaned out from calving season. Want to get that done before he comes, and I gotta get my little skid steer from CNC Rentals if I can to clean that out before he comes. Hopefully later this week it looks like. So yeah, I've been busy with that, getting the maternity pen out of the shed too. Had to go get a tractor from Roland because it was handier getting a small tractor in there to lift that out. So anyways, we're back to this. Hoping I was going to pick some bales this morning. Got my hitch turned around. This is why we strengthen our hitches on these John Deere's. It's a two inch round shafting bolted to the hitch. Like so. And then the chain that goes up to the top link of the three-point hitch just helps strengthen things because these bolts down here have a tendency oh, hopefully you can see that those two and then those two on the other side they have a tendency to stretch or loosen up or break i've had that happen different times so now every tractor on these Every 4450 I got here has this system. So I got that set up, turned the hitch around because so, it seems like I need, the, with, like I told you before, with the tires being a little bit smaller and then being radials flatter, the picker sits down too much. I thought about the adjustments here and I did do that but it just seemed like that hitch was way too low I figured this was probably the better option flip the hitch around and on the tractor and then lift things up so that those arms sit down a little more level on the ground so we got like I said we got the got that going again but we got another hiccup Went to grease things up, check the tires. This pin that holds the there. this pin that holds the uh, cylinder that lifts the arm up. And she's a broken. So I guess I better get another pin. Just another delay. Well, we're in business. We get a load of bales just across the highway here in what we call 14. Here's our monitor that we use. Control box, I guess. It's a dual hydraulic system. If you can see that or not, here I better stop the tractor so you're not bouncing around. Ah. Turn your switch on. Then your forks, one side, the other, toggle the switch that way, toggle the switch that way, your chain, same thing, all individually run, put the toggle switch in the middle, runs both chains, put your toggle switch in the middle on that one, controls your deck. So that's how she runs. 
those of you that don't know. So anyways, let's go get some bales. Maybe what five ten minutes to load that load and it was I went to the other end of the field and the bales are a little more scattered and I had to jam up against the fence once or twice and but uh, so now all I'm doing is hooking the transport chains just in case this these arms blow a hose or something or the art cylinders start creeping and so I'm not hitting a vehicle or hitting the ground or wrecking stuff and all that fun stuff. So that's how she works. We really like these bale pickers, this particular one anyways, these high lines. They uh, work fairly slick and uh, yeah, just <laughs> kind of lost for words. Just uh, yeah, they've been a good, oh yeah, that's what I was trying to say. For short distance hauls, like say up to five miles, these work fairly slick. One in man operation, don't have to go and hook and unhook and like I say these I like I like these high lines and because they seem to last and do a good job for us. So let's go home and get this unloaded.
done picking bales for the moment. Until we get some more hay in done anyways. And I noticed this hose here is weeping there and there. Looks like it's probably one of the original hoses, so it's all oh, just time to get it taken off. And before we put it away, take it off, get a new one, put it back on. The motor over there was working fine. Everything else seems to be working fine. There's only one thing on this bale picker that I don't really care for too much. And that's this beam here put on there for added strength especially if you're hauling silage bales or big real big bales but for changing a tire it's it's a pain in the butt what I've had to do to be able to get enough well you can only go so high you can only turn the axle so much or the walking beam pardon me and you still have to take that beam off so it's what 20 bolts 10 bolts on each side and they've got it on both sides of the frame here. So that's a bit of a pain in the butt. But with impact wrenches, I just, some people take them off and basically throw them away. But I figure that's only going to be in the road here. And I figure I may as well keep it on there for added strength. So, oh well, one little hiccup, nothing too major. But otherwise I really like it so anyways we're gonna end the video at that and uh, hope you enjoyed it like comment subscribe and uh,